Hey everybody, Vince Roca here, and today I'm going to show you how to multi-group an Avid Media Composer for reality television. Let's get started. Okay, first thing that we're going to do is right-click in this window and create a, a new folder uh, and name it after the assistant editor. Uh, then we're going to create a new bin and name it after the footage that we're working with, which is uh, 712. Uh, let's open up that bin. We Apple A to select all and hold down the Option key to drag it into our new window. Uh, we go ahead and close this and move our new bin up to the top and open it up to make it look all nice and tidy. Uh, drag it into our assistant editor folder. Now we want to create some custom column views. Uh, we're not going to need the creation date, so we click on it and hit delete. Uh, we don't care about drive. We don't care about in and out. We do care about mark in, but we don't care about mark out. Uh, we don't care about audio, tracks. I care about the start time, but I'm going to delete it and show you how to get it back. Uh, I don't care about tape, video, or tape ID. I go down to the fast menu here and I choose columns. And I want auxiliary timecode 1 shown. And also, if I click start here, that'll bring it back. And there's the start right there. Uh, now we're going to arrange these a uh, little bit. Uh, drag the duration to the end and choose align columns. And everything's all nice and pretty here. Uh, now that we've created our custom view, we want to save it. We're going to name it multi group and hit OK. And if we want to look at some other uh, views, we can watch statistics or look at capture uh, and see what those are. But uh, we're going to be working with multi-group and that's what we care about now. Uh, the footage that we're working with is a uh, soda fountain. Uh, these are, this is a popular video on the internet. You may have seen it several times. Uh, this uh, camera here, Canon camera, came in with no time code, so it uh, was just labeled default by one hour. And we're going to have to manually sync this up, much like GoPro videos. Uh, the D8 footage is a different angle, and the PC100 here is a different angle. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is select the three uh, D8 clips and go to bin and choose auto sequence. And it created a sequence that shows where the cameraman was trigger happy and turned on and off the camera for the day. Uh, and now we're going to go to the PC100 and we're going to select both of those and we're going to choose bin auto sequence on that too. And it shows where that cameraman was trigger happy. If you look at the start time code for these two, the PC100 time code uh, happens before the D8. So this is going to be our our main uh, sync map, our uh, base camera, uh, and the D8 we're going to load into our source monitor here. We need to add some video tracks and audio tracks, so let's add two of those and patch through to those tracks. Uh, then we're going to notice that our time code for the D8 starts at 1209.14. We're going to uh, highlight that and copy it, move over to the record window and paste it in and hit enter and that just moved our playhead to that exact position. So now when I hit the overwrite button it drops that D8 footage starting when the cameraman had pushed the start button there and you can see how the two camera people uh, uh, went back and forth from each other in the gaps in the day's footage. Uh, so we no longer need this sequence because it's incorporated as our sync map so let's delete it. Uh, let's load the Canon footage. Uh, again, it's going to need to be manually synced, so we have no time code. Uh, we add uh, video and uh, audio and patch through to those. And then we're just going to drop that in at the beginning. Uh, finally, we've got the uh, audio field recording, and we're going to add uh, a couple of audio tracks for those. We're going to patch through, turn off our video track so we don't move anything, play it to the beginning, and hit insert. And that just put the audio down there at the bottom. Now what we want to do is we want to sync these cameras up. Uh, and we're looking for uh, when the soda just starts to spew out of the bottle right there. Uh, let's monitor the first track. And it looks like it's happening right there. Um, so back up to the second track. Uh, let me open up a keyboard and show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to be using uh, the uh, comma and the period keys to uh, trim left one frame and trim right one frame. Uh, so let's select all of these tracks, uh, turn off the tracks that I'm not going to be working with, which is everything but the uh, D8 footage here. And uh, now I'm going to hit the uh, period key and move it down and again and again. And that's pretty much where it looks like it needs to be. Okay, now you'll take note that where my playhead is is right at the end of the V in uh, .mov right there. 
Uh, just make note of that. Now we turn our Canon camera back on and find the same spot that it spews out there. And now we put, move our uh, cursor on top of that, click and drag it, and we want to move it to where it's at the end of that V right there, keeping it on its same track. That's going to roughly line these two up. So now what we do, monitor V2 again and find that point. It's right there. And now we use the comma and the period keys to move that top clip to right about there. And now all three of our clips are synced up. Okay, uh, if we move the playhead to the beginning, you'll see that our uh, PC100 camera, our base camera, and our audio, uh, their time code is, uh, the time, sequence time code is 120609, uh, which also matches their time code. In the end, we're going to uh, multi-group everything by the auxiliary time code, so we want to copy these time codes and just shift them over for these three cameras, or these three clips, uh, the PC100 and the... Uh, uh, audio clip right there. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, get these two cameras to match that sequence time code which matches these clips right here. And the way that we do that is uh, to first create a custom keyboard. We find keyboard and we uh, right click on it and choose duplicate uh, and we name the new keyboard multi-group uh, and then we check the keyboard there and open it up. Now we go to Tools and Command Palette, and we want to make sure that Button to Button Reassignment is checked. And we're going to assign the Fast Forward button to key number 8, the Mark In button to key number 9, the Match Frame button to key 0, and the Find Bin button to the minus key here. So we have uh, Fast Forward, Mark In, match frame, and then find bin. Now we're going to move up to the composer settings. And under fast forward rewind, we want it to say stop at head frames only. Uh, that's the only one that we want checked. Uh, the first that we're going to work with is the D8 footage, so we're going to turn everything else off. Now if I hit the 8 key, you'll see that it stops at the head and tails of everything on that D8 track. So we want to move our cursor to the beginning and we hit the 8 key, move to the beginning of that clip. We hit the 9 key to mark it in. We hit the 0 key to match frame it up here. And we hit the minus key to highlight it in the bin here. You'll notice that the uh, mark in time code for the clip is different than the sync map. But remember, we want to change the clips to the sync map. So we select the sync map time code and paste it into the auxiliary of the clip here. Move back to the timeline. I hit the 8 key, and I don't care about the end of the clip. I hit it again, I go to the beginning, I hit mark in right there, I match frame it up to here, I hit the minus key, that highlights it here, and we copy our time code over again. Back to the timeline, we hit 8, I don't care about the end, 8 again, there's the beginning, 9 marks the end, 0 match frames, and then highlight it in the bin. And we copy our uh, sequence time code and paste it in there. Now we move to our Canon camera. And we hit the 8 key, we hit the 9 key to mark the end, 0 to match frame it, and then the minus key up to here. Okay, back for another keyboard shortcut. Uh, we open up the keyboard and we go to our command palette. And we're looking for add edit. It's right here, and we're going to put that at the uh, title list key right there to the left of the number 1, uh, the first key all the way over there. Uh, we're going to close this and close this, and then we're going to move up to the composer settings, and we're going to choose ignore track selectors and click OK, and now we're going to highlight all of our tracks. Now if I hit the 8 key, it stops at every single edit along the sequence. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, hit the 8 key to stop at the first edit. Then I hit the little Titleist key next to the 1, and that makes a uh, add edit along all tracks. Hit it again, add edit, uh, fast forward, add edit, 8, Titleist, 8, Titleist, fast forward, add edit. And just like that, I've added edit points at every single uh, cut. So I can group these clips together, I can group these together, I can group these together, and these together. Okay, it's time for some more keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I open up the keyboard and go to the uh, command palette, 
and we're going to map uh, mark clip to number one. We're going to map uh, mark out to number five. Uh, we're going to map go to in to number two, uh, go to out to number four. We're going to map match frame to number three, make sub clip to number six. And number seven, we're going to do something unique. We're going to click on menu to button reassignment, creates this little icon. We click on number seven there, and we go up to tools and choose timeline. So now every time you click the number seven button, it's going to activate the timeline. So the keys we're working with here are mark clip, go to in, match frame, go to out, mark out, create a sub clip, and then focus back on timeline, and then fast forward. Okay, we move up here and we hit the gang button. Then we come down to here and turn off the tracks that we don't want to work with. We're going to start with the PC100 uh, and move our playhead. There's an endpoint marked right here, so just hit the G key to uh, clear that out. Uh, move the playhead to the beginning. And now if I hit the number one key, you can see that it marked that clip right there. Uh, it might be easier to see if I hit the number one key right there, and you can see that it marks an in and out. So I hit the number one key, that marked an in and an out. I hit the number two key, that makes sure the playhead is at the beginning. The number three key match frames it up here. The four key uh, marks or moves the playhead to the out. The five key marks an out point. The six key creates a sub clip up here. The seven key focuses back onto the timeline, and the eight key fast forwards to the next clip. So I hit one again, that marks it. Two moves the playhead to the end in case it wasn't there. Three match frames it up here. Four moves the playhead to the out. Five marks the out. Six creates the sub clip. Seven, you'll see that this window is active right now. When I hit the seven key, it'll activate the timeline. Seven activates the timeline, and eight moves the playhead forward. Now there's no clip right here, so we're not going to subclip it. We move forward again, hitting the eight, and we hit eight again, and we move forward to there. So now it's one to mark it, two to go to in, three to match frame, four to go to out, five to mark the out, six to subclip it, seven focus back on the timeline, and eight to go to the next. So it's simply one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're at the end of the clip here. We move on to our next row, play ahead at the beginning. We hit eight uh, to get to the beginning of that, and we go We hit eight again to move over and eight and eight. And now we move on to the Canon footage. This process can be automated with using the uh, program Quick Keys to make it even faster. Uh, and now we move down here to our audio, turn video off. When you get a chance, surf on over to VinceRoca.com to watch some videos. And that's our last clip. Now if we look up here in our bin, uh, you can see we have all of these sub clips up here. We have our uh, sync map. Let's give that a, a different color. And we have our uh, original clips down here. We'll give those a different color just so they're easy to see. Uh, and if we sort by duration here, You'll notice that all the clips that have uh, 24 frames, that are 24 frames long, all have the same start time code. 
uh, 101, all have the same start time code. Your clips, your subclips should match up. Your duration should match. If all your durations are the same, then your subclip, uh, your auxiliary time codes should be the same. Sort by mark in to put them all at the top. We shift click to select them all and we go to bin uh, multi group. We're going to go by auxiliary time code one and we hit OK. And right now that created all of these multi groups and this one main multi group. Uh, since these are all highlighted, we don't need them anymore. We hit the delete key, delete 31 subclips, OK. Now, these smaller groups that are right here, what they are is a group of this stack, a group of this stack, a group of this stack, so on and so forth. We don't need these because they're all incorporated into this one here. So we hit delete again and hit OK. And uh, let's clean up our window slightly. We open up the multi group into here, go to our fast menu and choose a four up. Uh, view and hit play. <clears throat> Soda candy multicam test. And that's how you multi group an avid media composer for reality television. For more fun videos, visit VinceRoca.com.